Ice Contest is scheduled for six three-minute rounds in the welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, please welcome to the ring, Ruben Angulo. This is Ruben Angulo. He's been a busy man. He only turned pro back in 2021. He's managed to get 16 bouts. He's durable as well. He's got eight career wins against eight losses. Against six losses and two draws. Apologies. And he's only been stopped twice. He's been up and down in weight as well. So he's going to be a little bit heavier than uh, Hassan Azim tonight. So it'll be interesting to see how the hitman deals with this. And his opponent, flying out of the red corner, here is Hassan Azim. You can see the whole team there. This is Hassan Azim, Shane McGuigan, trainer behind him. And it's been a really successful time for that gym. Chris Billum Smith and Ellie Scottney winning world titles in almost consecutive weekends. It's an old boxing cliche, success breeds success. But it will be a huge encouragement for Hassan, a young pro, seeing Ellie and Chris bring your world titles back to that stable. Nice embrace with his mother and father at ringside there. It's a family affair. Brother Adam is here as well. Ladies and gentlemen, this welterweight bout is scheduled for six three-minute rounds. Our referee in charge, and the bell rings, Sean McAvoy. Let's meet the fighters first. Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks with red trim. He weighed in at 10 stone, 11 pounds. He comes to us with a professional record of eight victories versus six defeats and two draws. And he fights out of Buena Ventura, Colombia. Damas y caballeros, presentando Ruben Angulo. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks with gold and white trim. He stands five feet, ten inches tall. He weighed in at ten stone, 13 pounds. He comes to us with an undefeated record of six victories versus no defeats, with three of those wins coming by way of knockout. And he fights out of Slough, England. Well, it was a real disappointment for the promotion that we wouldn't be seeing Adam Azim top of the bill tonight. But if there's any consolation when you have brothers on the bill like that, chances are the majority of people that bought tickets to watch Adam Azim are going to stay on for Hassan, and that was a really good reception for the Slough man. Six threes at World to Wait. Hassan in the sparkling gold and black shorts. Against Ruben Angulo in the black and red. Hassan's looked good so far in his career. He's coming along on a different trajectory to brother Adam, but it's still very much an upward trajectory. They're taking him at a different pace. He's at a different stage of his career, Matt Macklin. But from what we've seen, the fundamentals are good, as you would expect from a very good amateur. And uh, they're drilling him nicely into a well-rounded professional. Well, as you say, he was a very good amateur himself. So there's good pedigree, uh, good fundamental, technical ability, good balance, nice straight shots, good feet in and out. And, you know, he carries power too. So, you know, I've been impressed with Hassan so far. Notable in his wins to date. He can punch a bit. That right hand is a real weapon. He throws it straight and he throws it with bad intentions as well. 
Yeah, you see very much in and out with his feet. I suppose as he progresses further in his professional career, he'll be a little bit, you know, he'll maybe that's set a little bit, and he'll happy to make use of a body movement more so. But as of now, his primary form of defence are in and out with his feet. Good left hook there, though. Bank of the jab. Turned him into a long left hook. I think that buzzed his opponent. He's hurt. Angulo is hurt. And down he goes in the opener. He makes it to his feet. No. There was a big stumble there. Referee Sean McAvoy decides enough is enough. I think Hanny Lennon the one there. You read the, 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 the knockout was inevitable. I think, I think Hassan was literally going to run straight across the ring and unleash both hands. So I think the referee actually made a good shout there. Yeah, and I can see, I'm not a great lip reader, but Shane McGuigan said it was really sharp. I'm sure that's what he said. Yeah, it was a little half step. He just took that little half step, fainted him, half step, walked him onto that right hand. Good shot. They're competitive brothers as well. And he, he, he would have wanted to get the stoppage. But yeah, he looked really on it tonight from the opening bell. I know we didn't get to see too much. Angulo didn't really give us a measuring stick of, of what he's about. But take nothing away from Hassan Aziz, razor sharp in there tonight. Yeah, very impressive, very impressive. Straight out uh, with the bell went, got his jab going, double jab right hand, back his opponent off, in and out with his feet. And uh, like I say, that right hand that caused it, it was a little faint, half step back, as his opponent, Angulo, fell into sort of no man's land, walked him onto that right hand, uh, legs went on steady and then went down and then when he when he got up you see him here with the there was that long left hook he kind of used the feint then turned into a lead left hook and oh yeah. yeah yeah really good right hand yeah like i said the long left hook was the first shot he fainted the jab turned it turned into a long left hook uh and then just put his shots together there got the knockdown and even when he got up there he kind of stumbled over his feet and that's what the referee Called it. There's, so, yeah, left hook. there's the left hook, Matt, a nod of appreciation. There's a right hand to the temple, and everything after that had an effect. Yeah, and you see him just stepping out of distance, not allowing Angulu to get close, smother, hold, spoil. He's just making sure he's keeping the distance where he can unleash that right hand, chop it down, and also he's not allowing Angulu, like I say, to get close and grab, hold, spoil, and grab, hold, spoil, and survive. Really good performance from Hassan Azim, who moves to 7-0. and Let's get confirmation from Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Sean McAvoy calls a stop to this contest. At 1 minute, 35 seconds of the very first round, declaring your winner by TKO, and still undefeated, Hassan the Hitman Azim. Well, we said he was renowned for his punch power, and we saw it there tonight. Sharp, accurate work from the 22-year-old from Slough. And you could see in some of the replays there, Adam Azim living it as well. Shadow oh. boxing at ringside. I, I bet he's more nervous when Hassan's boxing than he is for his own fights. At least when you're boxing yourself, you, you, you can do something about it. But when you're watching you know, a family member or even a really good friend or gym member, it's, the nerves are worse in some ways. Good stoppage of Abdallah Luanka last time out. Backed it up with a, stop a stoppage of Colombia's Ruben Angulo tonight. He's just making his way down to ringside, and eventually he'll be talking to Andy Clark. So, Hassan, the, the assassin claims another victim. That was quick work. Yeah, that's why. Right. Firstly, I want to thank God for everything he's done for me. I want to thank my parents as well, and I want to thank everyone out there, Tim McGuigan's team, and those that came down to support me. Thank you very much, guys. And uh, yeah, it was a um, quick performance, it was a good performance, and uh, I was looking sharp, and uh, like I said, I was practicing a lot in the gym, and I, 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 I done it in a fight, and got him out in 25 seconds, or whatever second it was. So yeah, I feel sharp, I feel great, and uh, cannot wait to jump into eight rounders. Would you prefer it to have lasted a bit longer? You know what, whatever God wills, but I'm just happy that I'm getting better, and even though it was the first round, 30 seconds, 40 seconds stoppage, I felt a lot sharp, and I can see the adjust adjustments I'm making, and the improvement, improvements I'm making. So a big shout, uh, thank you to Shane as well for working hard with me every time, and, and Josh as well. 
compared to your brother, you're kind of working more quietly in the shadows, but you're making really, really good progress. How far are off, you, off some kind of title level are you, do you think? Yes, I'm ready now, but whatever my, uh, my coaches say, whatever my team says, anything is possible. But I like to keep grafting hard, keep getting better and better, keep working hard. And, uh, yeah, I don't mind staying in the shadows. I'm working really hard, and uh, eventually I'll be up, up in the bright lights. So, Shane, just a quick one from you. We were just saying he's working in the shadows here, Hassan, compared to Adam, but he's making really good progress. Yeah, Hassan, in his own right, is a very, very good fighter. You know, he can punch, he's got good feet. Um, you know, he needs a little bit more experience, but he's getting it in the gym, Joe. He's getting really good quality sparring. Um, I think, you know, maybe at the end of the year we'll try and push on for a, for a title because um, he's, you know, I think he's, he needs a little bit more test. But that guy's, you know, he's... Obviously, he's been stopped twice, but he's gone the distance with quite a few middleweights and stuff like that. So, Hass is really a welterweight. Uh, we thought we were going to get rounds out there, but as soon as he hit with a good shot, it was, it was a good night. Okay, well done tonight. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I've always been interested in that dynamic. When you've got someone like Adam Azim, who's your brother and you're competitive and he's being super fast tracked, he seems very comfortable with the fact that he's being brought along. If they stay in the shadows, um, he's still on. TV, he's still on that portion of the card, uh, it will be at a stream but he seems very comfortable in what he's doing and, and trusting those around him Yeah, he seems very grounded actually and, and, and speaks uh, a lot of sense um, like I say, he was, he was very successful uh, in the amateur ranks himself um, and so far as professional, he, he's had quite a lot of spotlight too, um, and every time we've seen him I've been impressed by him, like I say good fundamentals, well schooled no good feet in and out, fast hands um, carries power, an awful lot to like from Hassan. Like you say, maybe he's going to move a little bit more slowly. But then you say that uh, he could be fine for titles at the end of the year. So that, that was going to be my next question. That seems like a, uh, a realistic target, doesn't it? Targets by a, a title by the end of the year. Yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, relatively, I don't think it'll be major titles, but certainly English title. I would have imagined something like that. Well, it's a big night in the career of Fraser Clark, who tops the bill tonight against Polish visitor and former world title challenger, Marian Spack.